Hello everyone, hello traders and welcome to my new video analysis where I will give you um, some general outlook about the markets and where we could move in the upcoming months. Uh, so I hope that you enjoy this video. If you are celebrating Thanksgiving, I hope that you uh, have ability regarding because of restrictions, uh, because of coronavirus that you still have a chance actually ability to spend some time with your family and friends. Um, so let's get started. I will look at um, emerging markets. I would look at uh, commodity index. I would look uh, at uh, fear index VIX. Uh, I would look also at sentiment and at the end I will also take a look on dollar index and compare it to the S&P 500. So firstly let's begin with emerging markets. Well emerging markets are so far moving nicely uh, to the upside here since March actually as you know uh, all of the markets across the globe has been in very nice uptrend so it looks like that this uh, stimulus and quantitative easing is um, the reason why this market is actually higher uh, we are also expecting as you know based on positive news this vaccine will uh, stop uh, spreading of coronavirus and obviously this could mean that economy sooner or later uh, will uh, return back to normal uh, probably at the start of 2021 at least in some um, uh, so some part of the world so um, the question is if what will actually happen once a vaccine is delivered i mean markets are obviously moving higher based on optimism okay so whenever this is really going into effect it could actually be the opposite okay because markets very often will trade uh, based on what are the expectations okay so because traders and investors will position themselves for the next potential uh, event move uh, or whatever so it really is important to understand that maybe this vaccine and this optimism can already be priced in and especially um, if we consider that if vaccine is delivered well maybe then we could also or investors in the general could also um, expect that sooner or later uh, they will stop or slow down this quantitative easing well if that would be the case, then you know that normally markets would, at least I think, they will slow down. So I would really not be surprised to see a reversal, at least maybe just for limited time, for just for a few months, meaning that we could be stepping into a corrective mode, maybe at the start of 2021, maybe already we will begin to see uh, some shift in the trends uh, later this year. So what I'm looking at here on the emerging markets is I can see that that here uh, price is approaching this upper trend line. Potentially this could be maybe even a triangle, an ABCDE pattern. There's also a chance that I could label maybe a completed correction already here at March lows and this recovery would be uh, seen as an impulse but even then i would still anticipate that sooner or later we will see a pullback ideally from that trend line and as you can see here uh, this could be very similar price action here also a reversal from that trend line on the s p 500 so uh, it will be very interesting to see if we can uh, slow down on the s p 500 if investors will really uh, look uh, away from the us on some emerging countries and maybe if this market will really maybe form a breakout here out of a triangle or maybe will this market also uh, slow down for this wave e pullback so a general idea is that we are approaching resistance there are definitely a bullish trends but on those two i would not be surprised to see some uh, some reversals now let's take a look also on this um commodity index this commodity index here has a very beautiful pattern actually i can see waves a b and wave c to the downside uh, and ideally this is a bottom formation here also if we consider that wave c is made by five waves well then we can expect 
uh, reversal in trade, at least in three waves. Okay, and in fact, we can see a very nice bounce here away from March lows. And this appears to be a very similar price action compared to back uh, to 2009 when we saw this very strong drop during financial crisis and then uh, markets reversed and recovered higher. And uh, you can see that actually both markets, commodities and stocks, everything turned to the upside. And now the question is if we are going to see more upside here on both, keep in mind that here uh, commodity index rallied in three waves and maybe here we will also see a strong three wave recovery. Now the question is where um, are better investments? It are, is this going to be in commodities or maybe in stocks or maybe in both? Well, I think it's very important to look maybe at um, commodities versus S&P ratio, okay, and see which markets are maybe expensive or which markets are uh, at much better levels for potential longer term investment decisions. So if we take a look here on this uh, ratio, this is commodity index versus uh, compared to the S&P, uh, compared to the SPY actually, and you can see that we are here at some extreme lows here okay this was actually back a uh, reversal back in 2000 where we also saw market crashing and now we are here making the same or even even much lower levels i should say uh, and again uh, if both markets would be headed to the upside commodities and stocks i think that much uh, better um, upside potential, much bigger upside potential is definitely on commodities because they are at extreme lows when comparing to the S&P 500. Plus, let's take a look here a little bit closer what has been going on since March. In fact, in March and April of this year, when market came uh, str strongly to the downside, we can see that this ratio actually bounced higher. So it means that if this market is recovering away from March lows, that actually commodity sector is much stronger than than stocks uh, the, than stock market in general. So I would not be surprised to see commodities uh, moving even higher here, and uh, they could maybe outperform um, the S and P 500. Uh, now let's take a look also at the sentiment uh, on the S&P 500 where we are at the current at the current uh, with the current price action so here i have at the top is the S&P 500 you can see it here at the all time highs and here at the bottom i have actually put call ratio index okay so actually it's an inverted because it's a much easier uh, to read uh, the data here when comparing to the, uh, to the uh, price chart and what actually means that if this market is um, is rising and you see the put call ratio actually I, I should call it call put ratio moving to the upside it means that mark that investors traders are buying a lot of calls and this uh, is because they will uh, they believe that the price will rise in the future <clears throat> so if we move into extreme positions with calls obviously that could be an alert an, an important alert that maybe this optimism is coming to an end because markets as we know move from pessimism to optimism and vice versa and what i'm looking at here is also moving average of this put call ratio call put ratio uh, and what we see is that we are moving here into very nice extremes when compared to the data back from 2018 so maybe we are really going to here into this some extreme levels meaning that we could slow down here in a bullish trend but i'm not saying that we cannot go much higher here i'm just saying that if you're maybe want to position yourself for a longer term investments it's always better to look for opportunities when this ratio is at the lower uh, at the lower side of this of this range of this sentiment okay um, let's take a look now also on dollar index versus the s p 500 now where is this chart here 
Now, dollar is very important, um, and in general, it's important because, uh, as you know, it could it it could recover when. Uh, stocks are moving to risk off mode because investors are confused where to put the money when there's a lot of fear when uh, stocks come to the downside so they somehow will feel uh, much safer if they are in cash and that's why the US dollar um, or some other currencies will move to the upside but the problem with the dollar currently is that there's a lot of quantitative easing of course if there's a lot of money printing uh, the inflation uh, goes up and obviously the value of the money as we know it um, is expected to decrease so uh, but still if we are going to see more weakness uh, more weakness are an important reversal on stocks i'm still sure that us dollar somehow will recover and if we take a look here on dollar index and compare it to the s p 500 we can actually see that i can count five waves to the downside now if you're familiar with the elliott wave theory Always when we see a five waves down, it means that market, that current trend that is very strong could start slowing down because after five waves, market may slow down for a pullback and then continue its direction. So currently we are already here at the new lows. We are potentially in a fifth wave. And if we are really going to see this market slowing down here, it means that dollar index could do much better versus the S&P 500. And normally this cycle, would be the case if the stock market would come sharply to the downside. Of course, I'm not saying the dollar would be the best investment. I'm sure that there could be some other alternative uh, solutions or some other currencies, maybe Japanese yen. Uh, but I'm just saying that maybe this chart is also important evidence why we could be uh, here looking for a new reversal in upcoming uh, in, in upcoming months so um, you really sh should keep an eye on this chart as well uh, not only because of the s p 500 but also because of other major currencies such as aussie uh, or i should just say commodity currencies in general which could give us an idea uh, where they could move if this dollar index will really outperform the s p in the upcoming in the upcoming months okay um, <clears throat> now let's take a look also on VIX now uh, fear index as we know it of the S&P 500 is also very important to, to look for because we know that when volatility will increase when there will be a lot of fear that's usually the case when of course the stock market is coming to the downside and i've been looking here at this price action of weeks and as you know whenever we are seeing a very strong spike here uh, fear is always coming back to the downside and this reversal after this after each shock uh, somehow had very similar uh, characteristics in the last uh, in the last two years and if we take a look firstly here back in 2018 we have seen a shock and then a reversal okay and this reversal okay was also very sharp and then market made um, four swings this was a first swing as i call it in wave one then you had leg two leg three and lag four and after a completion of this lag four we have seen a reversal to the upside okay we have seen a bottom information meaning that whenever this pattern came to the end shock reversal one two three four shock reversal one two three four always when this cycle has come to an end then again fear came back to the mark uh, back into the market because stocks came to the downside so um, this has been the case here in uh, 2018 and then again this was uh, seen through end of 2018 and 2000 and as you can see here let me just click on lock here and also uh, at the end of 2018 through 2019 again shock reversal one two, three, four, and then again, move to the upside, okay? And now again, we are here, 2020. Shock, reversal, one, two, three, and looks like that we are now slowing down. 
and looks like that we are here going to see optimism because fear is obviously uh, not visible on the market uh, through, uh, through VIX index. There is no volatility, which is normally the case when stocks come to the downside. And looks like that we are here going to see a little bit room for more weakness here. And if this is really going to be the case, then we know what will happen next. It could be again new shock. And this new shock maybe will occur again in 2021, maybe just a temporary shock, who knows, when S&P 500 will make just a little bit deeper pullback. But the important is to understand that even this VIX may suggest that whenever we will approach those this lower range, okay, we could potentially see a new reversal here to the upside, meaning fear would come back to the market while the S&P 500 could come back from the high. So I really think that this pattern, uh, of course, it can be just a coincidence here that this uh, unfolded uh, so nicely twice here. And now maybe we could be in the same situation here. Uh, but I think it's worth to watch uh, this, uh, this uh, volatility index and just be aware of potential new sharp recovery here into at the start of 2021 or i should say in the upcoming months because this could be very important evidence that we are approaching maybe temporary limited upside on the s p 500 which i think would not be surprised especially if we uh, consider uh, everything what i just went through but keep in mind that uh, i'm not expecting any very big or strong uh, drop on stocks in general i just think that there could be uh, some pullbacks maybe just a, sh a short temporary pullbacks um, it's definitely uh, worth to keep in mind that there is always much better to look at opportunities after deep after setbacks uh, rather than looking at opportunities at the top okay now uh, thank you for watching this video if you like the video if you have any ideas any opinions please leave it under uh, this youtube video here in the commentary section below or uh, press like if you uh, love the video and make sure to subscribe to my channel and i will also make sure to give you more updates in the future thank you and have a good day bye